Next up this morning, Representative Keel. And House File 2987. As she makes her way forward, Representative Keel moves that House File 2987 be re referred to the Committee on Civil Law and Public Safety. Welcome to the committee. Please present your bill. Thank you, Mr. Chair and, and members. Miss um, <clears throat> Rowan came and joined me, or came to my office this summer and asked if I was interested in uh, looking at uh, a drug repository bill and, and uh, helping to save uh, uh, some dollars cost in uh, drugs that uh, could be shared, I guess would be a comment. But with that, um, and I know how busy we are today, so I'm going to ask Roan if she would uh, explain to you what this bill does. Welcome to the committee. If you could please state your name for the record and present your testimony. Hi, um, my name's Rowan Mann, and I am a pharmacy student and a public health student at the university, and I'm here today representing a student organization that brought, uh, that brought this bill to Representative Keel. Um, so basically, this bill looks at long-term care facilities. Um, when a patient's there, they generally get their medications packaged individually for a few weeks. And if the patient doesn't need those medications anymore, if they get switched or if um, something happens and they no longer need those medications, those medications currently have to be thrown away. And that doesn't seem like it would be that big a deal, but in 2014, a study was con conducted across the United States in it was estimated that $2 billion worth of safe medications are being thrown away yearly at these long-term care facilities. Um, Colorado did a state-specific study, and they found out of their 220 long-term care facilities, they were wasting $10 million worth of safe medications. For comparison, Minnesota has 365 long-term care facilities. So we're throwing away medications that are still safe, but there are still many patients who cannot afford medications. Um, I work at um, North Memorial Hospital and every shift I talk to at least one patient who is not taking their medications because they just can't afford them. So what a lot of states have done, what 20 other states have done, is they allow long-term care facilities to donate those safe medications that have just been repackaged for um, another patient and allowed them to be donated to a medication repository program that can then give those medications to patients who otherwise couldn't afford them. This language was heavily modeled after Iowa and Iowa's program has been running since 2018 and they've helped over 71,000 patients. They have been able to donate out over $17.7 .7 million worth of medications since 2018. Wyoming is another great example. They've been operating since 2007. They have filled over 150,000 prescriptions worth over $12.5 million. Um, this piece of legislation is supported by the Board of Pharmacy, the Minnesota Public Health Association, and the Minnesota Nursing Association. And Dr. Weiberg of the Board of Pharmacy actually helped to rewrite this entire piece of legislation. Um, yeah. Are there any questions? All right, and before we move to questions to the testifier, Representative Keel, you have two technical amendments to get the bill into the order that you wish to present it. Uh, Representative Keel moves the A4 amendment. Representative Keel, to your amendment. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chair. Uh, um, the A4 was just to, uh, like you said, technical amendment that would clean up uh, some uh, details in the uh, for the drug manufacturers or the prescription drugs that would be dispensed. <coughs> right, are there any questions on the A4 amendment? Mr. Chung. And Mr. Chair, um, if the uh, A3-1 amendment is to be adopted, then on the A4, um, staff would suggest deleting lines 14 and 15. They, they amend the same uh, same lines of the bill. Okay. <clears throat> Representative Keel, do you wish to make an oral amendment to strike lines 1.14 and 1.15? Yes, uh, absolutely. All right, are there any questions on that oral amendment? Seeing none, all those in favor of the oral amendment to strike on the A4 amendment lines 1.14 and 1.15, signify by saying aye. Uh, aye. Aye. Opposed, same sign. The amendment is adopted to the A4 amendment. Are there any questions to the A4 amendment as amended? 
Seeing none, all those in favor of the A4 amendment as amended, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. The amendment as amended is adopted. Representative Keel moves the A3-1 amendment. Correct. Representative Keel, to your amendment. Just uh, it cleans up some language that uh, after uh, some discussion needed to be. And I don't know if uh, Mr. Chung would like to uh, add to that or not. Sure. Mr. Uh, Chung. Uh, Mr. Chairman, members, this, this amendment uh, clarifies that if you have a uh, <clears throat> if you have uh, prescription drug coverage, uh, then you would not be eligible to participate in the donation program, and instead you would uh, go through the health plan's uh, formulary exception process. Questions for Representative Keel on the A3-1 amendment. Representative Liebling. Thank you, Mr. Chair, and, and uh, to the testifier, thank you very much for bringing this forward, and you can see I'm a uh, co-author on the bill. But um, what, what Mr. Chun just explained, um, I have a question about that, because we're, um, lately we've been hearing a lot about some people have uh, prescription coverage, but they actually end up paying more under that coverage than they would uh, you know, um, sometimes for a drug if they didn't have the coverage. Y you know what I'm talking about? Um, Mr. Chun, maybe, maybe Mr. Chun can kind of address this because <clears throat> of the change that you just, you just described that under this amendment, that if we adopt this amendment, um, that uh, the, the bill wouldn't apply if you have prescription drug coverage. I think that was what I understood you to say. <clears throat> Mr. Oh, Chung. Chung. Yes, that, that's correct. Um, the bill, I, I guess, doesn't affect you know those situations perhaps where the patient ends up paying paying more, um, you know, uh, because of a higher copay. For example, it, it doesn't address that issue. It, it just addresses who's eligible for the uh, donated drugs. Right. So, Mr. Chair, Representative Lee So uh, maybe Mr. Chun could best answer this then, or if the testifier can answer it. So, would this not then um, that part of it hurt people who? have coverage but have coverage that um, you know is, is expensive for them in terms of the copay for the drugs they need. Mr. Chung. Uh, Mr. Chair, Rep. Liebling, um, I, I think it would depend on the drug coverage and I, I guess if a person did have a uh, drug coverage policy that per perhaps wasn't very favorable for them or didn't cover very many drugs, um, you know, then they would, they would um, perhaps be hurt by this provision. Um, this is a provision that I think uh, was kind of worked on or requested by some of the health plans, and they might be able to answer some of these questions as well. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Chair. And I see uh, Ms. Commit just came to the table to do just that. Welcome to the committee, Ms. Commit. If you could please state your name for the record and present your testimony. Thank you, Mr. Chairman and uh, members of the committee. My name is Catherine Commit, and I'm here for the Minnesota Council of Health Plans. And um, thank you for the consideration of this amendment. Essentially, what it would do is um, is fix the language. We were concerned that it would allow individuals who have health insurance, including drug coverage, to bypass the formulary and the formulary exceptions process. So we think what this bill is really designed to do is to help people who don't have insurance and can't access these medications to be able to have um, a way to uh, access those medications. But for people who have um, insurance, we want to be sure that they are able to use the formulary process um, that exists today. Representative Liebling. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Well, able to use the formulary process. So from the patient's point of view, what does it mean to be able to use the formulary process? Ms. Commit. Mr. Chairman and Representative Liebling. So I think what you might be getting at is, is it affordable? And that certainly is a public policy issue that we all are struggling with. Is drug coverage affordable? Certainly drugs are very, very expensive. But when somebody has coverage through a... Um, a health insurance plan, they should be able to call up their um, carrier or work with their physician or provider to be able to get an exception to a formulary or to um, look at the formulary to see what the drugs are that are covered for a particular class of drugs. So they do have, most people have coverage. We, we were struggling to figure out who would buy coverage or what employer out there in Minnesota would possibly offer coverage to their employees without drug coverage and we cannot think of anybody who would do it so um, I think 
nearly everyone who has coverage today um, it has drug coverage. Representative Cleveland. So, Mr. Chair and members, I, I, I did not really hear an answer to my question. Um, uh, <laughs> we know that a lot of people have drug coverage that's really inadequate, that they end up spending a lot of money on their drugs. And I do not understand. I mean, I think this bill is a great idea. And I do not understand why, because somebody has some drug, has drug coverage, that they should not be able to use this program in a case where their drug coverage could be very expensive for them. So you said there, you know, that it's, um, uh, you know, something about bypassing the formulary. And I, I really don't understand how it will benefit patients to be exempted from this bill if they have pharmaceutical coverage. I don't understand that. Maybe the bill author could come, or the uh, testifier could come back to the table and, and explain to me if, if she knows, or maybe um, Representative Keel. A follow up, Ms. Commit. Yes, thank you, um, Mr. Chairman and Representative Liebling. Um, what we don't want to have is people who already have coverage to uh, go outside of that process, try to get a particular drug through the drug repository program, and end up um, being on that drug and then wanting to come back in. And it just creates so many different problems. People have um, drug coverage. People who are insured typically have drug coverage. And there are processes in place in order for them to be able to um, access those drugs. Um, it, and if the, it's not the right drug to um, look at a formulary exceptions process and that sort of thing. With respect to the question about how expensive drugs are, I agree with you. They're really, really expensive. And unfortunately, more and more products that are out there um, look at trying to share some of those costs with enrollees. We've got to do something about drug costs. So I agree with you about that. But for people who are insured, they have coverage and it's um, best if they work through that process in order to ensure that they um, m remain within the system and, th and that their care can continue to be coordinated. Representative Well, Mr. Chair, I mean, this is, uh, I, I think this bears a lot more discussion. This, this, um, this is a, an amendment to the bill. I assume that this came in probably at the request of the health plans. Um, I'd really like to hear what the author has to say about it, and more importantly, even what the, what the um, proponent of the bill has to say about this, because I don't think this was in the original, uh, this was a part of the original idea. And maybe you could tell us, you know, what other states are doing with regard to this issue. Ms. Yeah. Mann, welcome back to the committee. If, uh, yeah. Go ahead with your testimony. Thank you, um, Representative Schumacher. Um, so I was just talking to Dr. Weiberg about this. Um, and no, this was not in the original draft of the legislation. Um, I do not believe that it needs to be in there. But I also do understand their, the point of it. Um, there will be a limited supply, especially at the beginning um, of medications. It takes a while to get these. Um, as Iowa or Wyoming, each year they get more donations and each year they have a more powerful program. So there will be a limited number of medications to begin with. And making sure that those go to the patients who have no safety net at all, that is, that would be very important to this bill and kind of is what this bill is trying to do. Um, in Iowa, in Iowa's language, they actually rank it out. So where the first line of individuals would be the ones who have no health insurance. And then they go down to number two of the patients who cannot afford them with their insurance. So that's how other states have done it. And that is it. Yeah. yeah, thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you very much for that explanation. So say in Iowa, so you get a, have a priority if you have no coverage. Uh, that's yeah. certainly understandable. But we know there are many patients who have coverage and still can't afford. And so to me, it just makes no sense at all to just exempt those and say they can't use the program. So I mean, I, I've just, from what I've heard here today on this, I'm going to oppose this amendment. Um, and uh, you know, if, if other members decide that it's OK to exempt people who just because they have coverage, whether or not they can actually afford their drugs, then uh, you know I hope we can work on this going forward because I think it's a very good bill, and I just don't see a reason 
you know, notwithstanding that obviously the health plans don't want this in there for reasons that are still a little bit opaque to me, I think that um, I, I don't think we should put this amendment on. I, I think that we should rank them if, if, if we need an amendment for it. Okay. Representative Keel. Mr. Chair and members, um, you know, part of this is not creating an incentive. We don't want to create incentive for people to go outside of their coverage, and that's the reason for the amendment in my mind. Any so. further discussion on the A3-1 amendment? Seeing none, all those in favor of the A3-1 amendment signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. No. no. The A3-1 amendment is adopted. Uh, Representative Keel, to your bill as amended. Uh, <clears throat> thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, I believe that uh, at, at the, um, as it stands now, this would be a very effective help for uh, uh, people who are looking for uh, medicine. As uh, Rowan explained, uh, keeping, keeping our uh, uh, citizens, who, uh, especially our seniors, who need to make sure that they have access to medicine, and especially when they can't afford it, uh, makes helps to make them available for them. And um, uh, with that, I guess I would ask you to support the uh, amendment. Is there anyone Thank else Bill. who wishes to testify in House File 2987? Seeing none, final questions from members. Final word, Representative Keel. Please support the bill. With that, Representative Keel renews our motion that House File 2987, as amended, be re referred to the Committee on Civil Law and Public Safety. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. The motion prevails, and House File 2987, as amended, is re referred to the Committee on Civil Law and Public Safety.